For more than 70 years, the Hard Winter Wheat Quality Laboratory in Manhattan, Kansas, has provided wheat breeders information about the mill and bake quality of future commercial lines of wheat. Wheat breeders spend up to 15 years and nearly $1 million for each new variety of wheat developed. Not only must new wheat varieties pay off economically for farmers, they must possess the outstanding milling and baking properties in demand by today's sophisticated domestic and export millers. Our purpose is to take out, you know, everything and only leave the top one or two, uh, you know, so there's literally thousands that, that never get into the commercial market whatsoever, and that's really our purpose. It, we're the firewall uh, there at the front uh, to prevent uh, uh, loss of quality within our uh, agricultural markets. And uh, regarding wheat, we're screening out all the bad stuff to make sure that only the top-notch, high-quality stuff get out there. Brad Seaborn is director of the Wheat Quality Lab, which services 14 private and public breeding programs in 13 states from Canada to Mexico and Idaho to Missouri. Each year, Seaborn and his associates survey more than 2,000 lines of wheat for more than 40 quality characteristics. Data generated by the Wheat Quality Lab helps breeders decide whether new varieties meet these industry quality specifications. Scientists at the Wheat Quality Laboratory begin receiving wheat samples from throughout the Great Plains shortly after wheat harvest commences in Texas in the summer and until harvest ends in the northern states in the fall. Samples are milled into flour and made into bread or noodles, the two most important uses for hard red winter wheat. Researchers use a myriad of instruments to gather objective end-use data. You know, the United States has always relied on uh, being a, uh, the leader in production of wheat, but uh, there's a lot of competition worldwide, increasingly uh, more competitive worldwide in other countries producing wheat and because they are undercut, because they're able to undercut the price of U.S. wheat, uh, that makes it really difficult for us to compete on that, on that score. So what do we have left? What we have left is to be able to give and provide the highest quality wheat. And again, by quality I mean in terms of end use functionality, the, the type of product that can be made from that material. Wheat milling has changed very little since wheat was first made from flour thousands of years ago when stones were used to break wheat apart and make flour. This is, this is old technology, been very dependable and reliable for, for decades, but my point is as a research facility, we should be doing something more than just using old technology. We should be looking at what's the new technology, where, where can we take milling into the future because milling is the first fundamental step in converting wheat to flour to a final product. And it influences the quality of that flour all the way through the process. Seaborn says some exciting new innovations are on the horizon, including a new type of mill that uses a combination of high-frequency pulse waves and a high-pressure air to break wheat kernels down into flour. Ideally, this pulse wave mill technology would be thoroughly tested at the Wheat Quality Laboratory to evaluate its promise in the industry. First, however, significant changes must happen to the laboratory, renovating the facilities to relieve overcrowding and update antiquated equipment is paramount to the laboratory's mission, which is help wheat breeders and end users develop high quality food products. And I think most consumers will tell you, I haven't noticed anything different about yeah. my bread. And see, that's, that's the goal. You're taking a biological material that's being grown in multiple environments across a huge geographical area and you're throwing it all into a single pot and expecting it to perform exactly the same way it did the year before and that's the challenge for the wheat industry always has been is to get that material to perform exactly the same way make the exact same loaf of bread from day to day to day to day so it's I don't think it's so much an issue of has the quality improved as our ability to convert that material uh, and, and channel the appropriate material into the appropriate product, has that improved? And I would say absolutely yes. 